Merry Christmas. Everybody right now, just take a big deep breath in. Breath out. We just did that for all of you who are stressed out and still freaking out about food you have back at home or gifts that aren't yet wrapped and the stress of this season and just to allow yourself to be in the presence of the Lord. Because this is what it's really all about. The Savior was born for us. That God the Father loves the world so much that he gives his only begotten Son. And being here with the Lord and his presence in the tabernacle and his presence will come upon us in this altar in his word proclaimed. That's what it's all about. And then everything else just fade away. To put my homily in its context, I'd like you to open up your hymnals, grab your blue hymnals out of your, uh, your pews there. We're going to turn to number 424. And we're going to look at the, uh, the last verse or the third verse of Hark the Herald Angels Sing, number 424. And this will uh, help kind of pave the way for the road I want to take us down tonight. So this is the song that goes, you know, Hark the herald angels sing glory to the newborn king, peace on earth. We're going to go to verse 3 though, ready? So help me out. Hail the heaven-born prince of peace, hail the son of righteousness, Light and life to all he brings. That was beautiful. You all actually just auditioned for our choir for next year, and you all made it. So um, it was actually very beautiful to listen to you sing. I stopped singing so I could hear you sing. But I wanted to hear particularly you sing that second part of that third verse says this. Born that we no more may die. Born to, ri- born to raise each child to earth. Born to give a second birth. As odd as it might seem, I'd like to preach on this Christmas day on death. Some of you know uh, I have some peculiar antics. If you were to go to my rectory here, there is a glow-in-the-dark skull in my bedroom. I like to think of death whether the lights are on or the lights are off. In my chapel, in my rectory, there is a skull. In my office, there is a skull. The reality is we're all going to die, right? The question is, how do we die? For some reason, this year of the year 2019 has been a year where there's been a lot of death in my life. Every year around this time, I always write a letter that I put inside of all my Christmas cards, top things, top 10 things that happened in the past year. And normally it's like really great positive things that happen in my life, opportunities I've had, situations that have come about, pilgrimages or things of these sorts. But this year on my top 10 things that have happened, uh, I mentioned the death of three individuals. Now, as a priest, like, I encounter death all the time. Every year, I bury about 40 individuals from our parish. It's a part of life. But this year, I had three individuals that were very close to me that died. Early this year, um, -year 91-year-old Monsignor Moran passed away. 
Monsignor Moran was the spiritual director that I would go to every month to go and visit in Terre Haute, Indiana. He founded Catholic Radio in our diocese. He opened a perpetual adoration chapel. He founded his own Catholic high school. He was a staunch promoter of the pro-life cause and would do anything for the sake of evangelization and bringing souls to Christ. I had the opportunity at his funeral to actually be the priest who said the words of committal uh, at his graveside and his living siblings actually gave me the, the cross that was part of his casket. Um, a few months ago, sorry, a few weeks ago, um, I was had to travel up to Minnesota for the death of Bishop Paul Serba, the Bishop of Duluth, Minnesota. He was a faculty member when I was in seminary in Minnesota and uh, a huge encourager in my own life. And I think any of you who are parishioners here at All Saints Parish know that this past November, Joshua Welsh, age 15, passed away. As I've been reflecting upon this theme of really powerful and important people in my life dying, the thought came to the fact that like death is hard around the holidays. But then, if we truly understand who the Lord is, and what it means to believe in him and to have a relationship with him. This song is really true. Born that we no more would die. It's our belief as Christians that those who die in the Lord are not dead, that they're truly living. Oftentimes around Easter we think a lot about empty tombs, and so I think people naturally think about their deceased relatives and friends, and they hope and pray that they're in the glories of heaven. I'm not sure how often we think about death at the time of Christian, at, at Christmas. I think there's such an emphasis on the infant Christ that we focus so much on life and babies and children, and yet, why did God the Father send his son? He sent his son so that we could be born again. So that death would be no more. And that every one of his believers could inherit eternal life. And thus this infant is born for us. This child is given to us. The son of God becomes a man so that we can live forever. But it's not just about the narcissistic we, or me, or I. It's for them. Every single person in this church can call to mind individuals in their life that aren't with us. It might be your mom and dad. It might be your grandparents. An aunt or an uncle a sibling. It might even be your child. Born that we would die no more. That's our belief. That's what we put our trust in. There is no time like Christmas. Statistics actually prove that more people get together for Christmas than they do for Easter. Why is that, by the way? The obligation of gift giving. So more people are together at Christmas, and the reality is, is that whether we want to talk about it or not, those that have gone before us are terribly missed at Christmas. This is why depression and suicide are at their highest during this time of year. And so, brothers and sisters, we need to talk about it. I want to encourage you, strongly encourage you, 
during your gatherings that continue to exist throughout these Christmas days to talk about your deceased loved ones. To not just notice that they're not at the table, but to mention by the, them by name and to talk about who they were. Specifically talk about their relationship with the Lord. And what flowed out of that? Their generosity, their compassion, their love, their mercy. Born that we no more may die. When I was in Jennings County, my parish previous to this, about nine years ago, I read a poem, and then it started this whole little, little ministry in my life. Here at All Saints Parish, the Lady Sedali, which is an amazing, amazing ministry here at our parish, now runs this all for me. But I read this poem um, about eight or nine years ago, and I was like, gosh, that poem is beautiful. I want to send it to every single person in my parish that has lost someone this past year. And so I asked the secretary to look up in our database every single person who had lost a relative that last year that I had buried. And we sent this letter with this poem to every single person. And the response that I got was unbelievable. I've done that every single year since. Our Lady Sedalia here at All Saints sent out over 100 letters last week to people in our parish who are grieving the loss of a loved one. The poem is called My First Christmas in Heaven, and it's written from the vantage point of an individual who died, was in right relationship with God, and is in the glories of heaven. In a very true sense, born that we no more may die. I like to read this poem, and as I read it for myself, I read it from the vantage point of Monsignor Moran and Bishop Paul Serba and Joshua Welsh. But I ask of you to have it read from the vantage point of your deceased loved ones that you believe are with the Lord. My first Christmas in heaven. I see the countless Christmas trees around the world below with tiny lights like heaven's stars reflecting on the snow. The sight is so spectacular. Please wipe away that tear, for I'm spending Jesus Christ, so I'm, for I'm spending, Je sorry, for I'm spending Christmas with Jesus Christ this year. I hear the many Christmas songs that people hold so dear, but the sound of music can't compare with the Christmas choir up here. I have no words to tell you the joy their voices bring, for it's beyond description to hear the angels sing. I know how much you miss me. I see the pain inside your heart, but I'm not far away. We really aren't apart. So be happy for me, dear ones. You know I hold you dear. And be glad I'm spending Christmas with Jesus Christ this year. I send you each a special gift from my heavenly home above. I sent you each a memory of my undying love. After all, love is a gift more precious than pure gold. It was always most important in the stories that Jesus told. Please love and keep each other, as the Father said to do. For I can count the blessings of love he has for each one of you. So have a Merry Christmas and wipe away that tear. And remember, I am spending Christmas with Jesus Christ this year. My dear brothers and sisters, on this Christmas light, I truly believe that we're called to remember that Christ was born to give us eternal life, and that we are called to have hope in the glory and the splendor of heaven 
which is a promised gift to those who believe in him. And to those who are dead, to those who are gone, it is our hope and it is our prayer. But the reality is, my brothers and sisters, is that although we may gather, although we may hope, although we may mourn for those who have died, the reality is that there are others who are dead. And those others are actually still living. You see, my brothers and sisters, many of us, although we are alive, although we have a heartbeat, we are dead. We are dead because we choose to not live our life. We choose to allow our life to consume us. We choose to allow our life to be burdened by sin, by addiction, by work, by the pleasures of life. And although our heart beats, we are merely making it through life. And this is the farthest thing from what the Father desires. The song continues and clearly says, Christ is born to raise each child of earth and born to give us second birth. We mourn the death of our loved ones. We mourn those who are not with us at Christmas. And the Father in heaven mourns those who are on earth that do not live either due to their sins or due to their shackles or due to their addictions or due to the struggles in their life, they aren't alive. And my brothers and sisters, that's what this night is all about. It's a night of renewal and invitation and opportunity. It's a night for us to recognize again that Christ is born. But the Father's love is so overwhelming that he gives us his Son. That eternal life is offered to every one of us. I'm a priest. I've been a priest for 17 years. And I can tell you there's days that I don't live. There's days I just survive. There's days I just get by. And that's not the Father's will. I don't know why you're here tonight. You might be here tonight because your heart is burning with a love for Jesus Christ, and this was all you thought about all week. You might be here out of tradition. You might be here because you were forced to be here, or you were drugged here, or coerced in being here. But Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Son of Mary, my dear brothers and sisters, was born for every single one of us. And he wants our rebirth. He doesn't want us dead. He wants us alive. He wants us to have purpose and joy and meaning and life, and it's possible. When we surrender, when we give our lives to him, when we open our hearts, to silence and to prayer, we change our habits and change our life. When we live with availability, life changes. As you gather around your Christmas table this year, I truly do hope that you call to mind the heroes that have gone before you, your brothers and sisters who we no longer visibly see. But I also pray that you make a choice to be one yourself, to be the difference, to live your life to the full in Christ Jesus, to be born again as he was born, so you may know the freedom and the beauty of the sons of God. As the song says, 
born that we no more may die. May we cast off our death and may we live for eternal life. And may Christ born, Son of the Eternal Father and Son of Mary, lead us to eternal life. Amen. Thank you.